Okay, so in this video, we want to look at the following simple consequence of the squeeze theorem. And the consequence is, if the limit of the absolute value of an is equal to zero, as n goes to infinity, then the limit of an without the absolute value is also equal to zero as n goes to infinity. And if you think about this, it's a very intuitive result. The absolute value is the magnitude of a real number. So we're saying the magnitude of an shrinks to zero. There's really only one option. An must shrink to zero as well. Well, let's give a very short proof of this intuitive understanding using the squeeze theorem. We know that any real number is at most its absolute value and at least as big as the negative of its absolute value. So if you visualize this on the real line, then you have zero, you have the absolute value of a n, and you have the negative of the absolute value of a n. But we know by assumption that in absolute value, a n shrinks to zero. So this term will be approaching zero. If a n in absolute value shrinks to zero, so does negative an. This will also approach zero. But as an is always between negative an and an, and both sequences are approaching zero in the limit, so this point approaches zero, this point approaches zero, an is always in between, it has nowhere to go, and by the squeeze theorem, in the limit it gets squeezed onto zero. So a n must also converge to zero. And that's it. Let's now look at two examples. Suppose the sequence a n is sine of n over n. What's annoying here is that as n goes to infinity, well, n goes to infinity, but sine of n will oscillate forever between positive and negative values. And if that's a problem, if an oscillation of this type is a problem, well, let's just take the absolute value, and then we'll remove the problem. So, the absolute value of a n, of course, is at least 0. The absolute value is always non-negative. And this is what? Well, it's the absolute value of sine of n over n. As n is positive, we can only put the absolute value on sine of n. And now we'll drop sine of n in favor of 1. We know that in absolute value, sine of n never exceeds 1, so this is at most 1 over n. And then we can let n tend to infinity. 0 is constant, so it converges to 0. 1 over n converges to 0 as well, as n goes to infinity. And so the absolute value of a n is between two sequences that both converge to 0. And so a n in absolute value gets squeezed between 0 and 0. Therefore, by the squeeze theorem, in absolute value, a n converges to 0 as well. But, now we can quote this result, if the absolute value of a n converges to zero, so does a n without the absolute value. So a n being sine of n over n also converges to zero as its absolute value converges to zero. So indeed, as n gets bigger and bigger, sine of n over n will be shrinking to zero. Let's look at one other example where a n here, say, is n squared over negative 3 to the n. Now here, if you split up the negative 1 times 3 to the n, you'll get n squared over negative 1 to the n, 3 to the n. And if you think of what kind of case you're in here, well, n squared will go to infinity, 3 to the n will go to infinity, but the negative 1 to the n 
it will give you positive, negative, positive, negative forever. So you couldn't just use here L'Hopital's rule because of this oscillation. The idea is, well, if an oscillation between positive and negative creates a problem, we can get rid of it, of course, by taking the absolute value. So let's now ignore a n for now in favor of its absolute value. All the absolute value does is it kills off possible negatives, and so we're left with n squared over 3 to the n as they are both positive. And now you will have an infinity over infinity case, and you could use L'Hopital's rule. The key point is, because you cannot differentiate a discrete sequence of real numbers, you would have to look at the sequence x squared over 3 to the x, the continuous analog. And you let x go to infinity. You have an infinity over infinity case, so if you apply L'Hopital's rule the first time, you'll have the limit. The derivative of x squared is 2x over the derivative of 3 to the x is 3 to the x ln of 3. Again, we have infinity over infinity case. Apply L'Hopital's rule one more time. The derivative of 2x is 2. Ln of 3 is a constant multiple, it stays there. Derivative of 3 to the x is 3 to the x ln of 3 times ln of 3. This stays there. And now you have 2 over infinity, which is, of course, 0. And you see, by dropping the alternate sign here with the absolute value, now we can use L'Hopital's rule, the limit is 0. So in absolute value, a n does converge to 0. Therefore, we can drop the absolute value, and a n still converges to 0. And that's it.